guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. I am so excited about today's video because we are entering into my favorite reading season, which is fall. So I thought it was only apt to put together a fall reading recommendations video. For me personally, when I think about what do I like to read in the fall season, it's atmospheric, it's full of murder, it's full of magic. And that is definitely what I put together for recommendations today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first book recommendation is a recent read and honestly the entire time I was reading it it just felt like a perfect fall winter eerie read and that is The Helm of Midnight by Marina Lostetter. This is a really unique story as it actually kind of combines a few genres more specifically fantasy and horror. This is a thriller kind of murder mystery based story that absolutely will draw you in from page one. It has elements of a whodunit murder mystery but it also has incredible fantastical world building a really interesting magic system, and just a new fantasy world to try to figure out along the way. And in this story, our primary character is Krona, and she is a regulator. And in this world, regulators are kind of like detectives, but their primary role is to kind of investigate and regulate the use of magic within this world. And one of the use cases of magic in this world are death masks. And essentially you can kind of infuse a mask with knowledge, perspective, and expertise after your passing. And people can wear this mask and kind of imbue that power for themselves. At the beginning of this book, a very powerful and destructive death mask is actually stolen. It is a mask of a very famous serial killer named Charbon, and now this killer is walking the streets again. But it also seems to be pointing to a larger political organization and perhaps kind of larger scheme than just a serial killer on the loose. I loved this book so much. For one, the magic is absolutely fascinating. It's definitely kind of artifact based magic with the death mask, but it also manifests itself in different ways as well. And all of those are sort of explored and explained within this book. And it was honestly just so cool. Obviously, Krona as a main character as our primary detective, she's very, very likable, so smart. And just kind of seeing her work through the case was absolutely fascinating. But obviously at the heart of the story, the mystery was just so engaging. This story actually has more than just Krona's perspective. We actually follow a few different players in this world as well. And they're also told on differing timelines, which really gives you a very unique view of the problem from a variety of different angles. All in all, this book was incredibly engaging. I'm really excited for the next one in the series. The ending was very satisfying. The atmosphere was amazing. And just sort of this fantasy horror thriller combination was so, so successful. But this is a perfect fall read. Next book is another darker option, but it has to do with witches and magic, and that is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is a sort of Salem witch trial horror fantasy story as well. I read it last Halloween and personally really enjoyed it. It just felt perfect for the season, but this is set in a place called Bethel, and here the word of the prophet rules. And our main character, Manuel Moore's very existence is considered blasphemy. So she does her best to sort of keep her head down, fit in as best she can, follow all of the rules to a T. But a mishap at the beginning of the story lures Emmanuel into the dark forest where four witches were killed by the first prophet. And there Emmanuel begins to hear their call and their power and also stumbles upon her mother's diary. And as Emmanuel begins to uncover secrets about her mother's heritage as well as magic and witches, the town itself begins to get cursed and actually blighted by different plagues. I feel like if you really like Netflix's Sabrina, this is definitely a book to check out. It's dark, it's incredible incredibly atmospheric as I've already mentioned. It also has that small town historic setting with a very strong religious figure at the heart of it. And when the plagues begin to start hitting the town itself, it gets really creepy and eerie. And a lot of the religious imagery and allegory is just very strong to kind of drive up the intensity of the story. Obviously, Emmanuel is the main character, uncovering her mother's past, as well as learning more about the magic that has been kind of hidden and locked away in this town is really fascinating. She actually she also gets wrapped up with the prophet's son and they sort of begin to discover the dark secrets of the prophet himself. This book is very intense, very, very windy, but I think the historical setting and the sort of witch trial elements to it make it a very intense as well as spooky read for the fall season. Next up, I have a more classic whodunit option and that is The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. This is another more recent read for me and honestly, I loved it quite a bit and it just feels 
perfect like sweater weather who done it agatha christie vibes what more could you want this is stuart turton's newer release and it's set primarily on a ship in the 17th century we're basically following a variety of perspectives but the primary setup is one of our primary characters art has been the trusted bodyguard of a very famous detective with the beginning of the story has been arrested for a crime that art is convinced that he did not commit and they're currently being transported back to the netherlands for him to stand trial we also follow the perspective of a wife of a very prominent political individual who's also traveling back to the Netherlands on this boat. Before the boat leaves, essentially, there is an individual who basically cries out that everyone on board is doomed, that the devil is present and the ship is bound to sink. From there, very unusual and unexplained things begin to happen on the ship. Slowly, everyone on board slowly gets transfixed in this mystery, kind of questioning the very reality of the world around them, and if in fact they are being possessed by the devil. This book I thought was incredibly interesting. It truly is a classic whodunit. I feel like the author does a very excellent job of sort of honing in on the hysteria of the unknown, all of these characters being trapped on this boat, and the mystery kind of ballooning out of control, and kind of transforming from an invisible monster in the dark to real monsters surrounding everyone on board. It was just overall a really intriguing and dark story. Following Art and Sarah try to solve this mystery while on board a seemingly doomed ship was honestly quite the page turner, but the pacing was very, very successful. I enjoyed this book from beginning to end, and if you're wanting a classic thriller whodunit story, a bit of a devilish twist, this is one that you should definitely check out this season. Next up is a fantastic option for a bit of a lighter read, but still something lush with magic and family, and honestly, a mystery with a bit of deviousness at the center as well. And that is The Inheritance of Orcadia Divina. This is just an absolutely fantastic fantasy story. And honestly, this is a book I fell in love with on page one, just the writing style, the overall quality of the story itself, the sort of different timelines we follow these characters and just the interconnectedness of this family. It truly was everything and just seeped with magic, overflowing with ambiance and magic. I promise you just the, the vibe of this book is everything you could watch. But this basically follows the Montoya family, and they're very used to being surrounded by unusual things. They've kind of always had magic in their life from day one. And at the center of their family is a matriarch, Orcadia Divinia. And at the beginning of this book, she basically sends every member of their family an invitation to her funeral. She basically says, I'm dying, come to my house and collect your inheritance. And of course, everyone arrives at Arcadia's house hoping to finally get answers to some of the questions they've had their entire life about Arcadia, about their family, about magic. But instead of answering anything useful, Arcadia just turns into a tree right before their eyes. Slowly their inheritance begins to show itself with different manifestations of magic, but quickly the family also realizes that they're in danger and that there's a dark and mysterious figure from Arcadia's past that is now hunting other members of the family. I truly I'm obsessed with this book. First and foremost, just the central family component. In the present day chapters, we primarily follow Marimar and Rey, kind of working through their new magical inheritance and also kind of working through elements of their life and their own personal hopes and dreams. But throughout this entire story, we also get chapters of Arcadia's past, where we basically follow her from childhood to present day, getting a really deep view on her life, her decisions, and what led her to found Four Rivers, which is kind of the family compound. And of course, through all sets of chapters, we dive deep into the family heritage, as well as just the family connection and blood that binds everyone together. I truly cannot say enough things about the writing style and quality of the story. It's just mesmerizing. I truly enjoyed this book from beginning to end and just highly, highly recommend it. Next up, I have a non-fiction selection for you for this fall season, and that is Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. And honestly, if you like true crime podcasts, true crime documentaries, this is the book for you because this is one of those situations of stranger than fiction because this is the account of the Chicago World's Fair told in part about all the architects and all the individuals bringing the World's Fair together and kind of spanning the advancement in architecture and science and all 
all sorts of things to make it happen. On the flip side of that, we also follow the serial killer who stalked the world affair, killing countless individuals along the way. I read this a few years ago and I actually read it while I was living in Chicago, which was a very interesting experience. Um, I also listened to the audiobook, which I would highly recommend. It just was a very engaging narrator. And listening to the story be told to you, it gets so creepy. This won a National Book Award. It's a very beloved story and I promise you even if you don't read a lot of nonfiction, this book will absolutely pull you in. Not only is it a really fascinating and dark real moment in history, structurally how Eric Larson writes it, it's told in a very narrative quality so I find it to be very approachable. This story is just fascinating. I mean on the one hand you're following all these architects which is just really interesting as they're trying to bring together, get the funding, and build the World's Fair which in itself is absolutely really cool to kind of see the behind the scenes of that especially for the time. It was a really big moment in history but coupling that sort of advancement, the shining glory that is the World's Fair, there's this nefarious very dark side that we see with the serial killer himself. We read from his perspective, we follow him as he constructs his like house of doom. It's absolutely bone chilling and real which makes this book just hold a lot of weight. But I do feel like if you like true crime, if you enjoy audiobooks, if you're looking for a thriller based story, I recommend checking out The Devil in the White City as I promise you will not be able to put this book down. Next book recommendation I have is Middle Game by Seanan McGuire and this is another dark mystery based fantasy story. I clearly have a favorite type of book for this season and uh, this checks all of the boxes. In the story we primarily follow Roger and Dodger. They're twins and also incredibly gifted individuals. Roger is gifted in language and words and writing where Dodger is incredibly gifted in mathematics. They grow up on different coasts but they get connected in their early childhood and stay connected throughout their entire lives. In combination with Roger and Dodger's chapters and kind of following them throughout their lives as they kind of go about various ventures, we also follow a secret alchemic congress that perhaps was very involved in Roger and Dodger's origin itself and also their ultimate goal of taking over the world. And so spirals a very windy, kind of academic-y focused thriller-based story of two individuals trying to stop a group of individuals trying to take over the world and also capture them for their own specific interests and gains. This is a very unusual story spanning over many many years and we follow Roger and Dodger kind of at different points in their lives kind of getting caught up with this alchemic congress. They themselves also begin to understand more about their own abilities outside of their very smart brains. I feel like this is a very intense story that's very much rooted in sort of an academic sort of setting. It very much explores the power of math and language and how all of those things make up the fibers of our very existence. It's a very interesting and intense story if you love secret organizations, individuals striving to achieve levels of godhood to control everything around them, complicated and dynamic main characters in Roger and Dodger, and ultimately, you know, a race to, you know, control the very powers of the universe. Check out Middle Game. Next Fall Read is a bit of a lighter option, one that is more contemporary, more romance, more coming of age, but still has so many wonderful fall trappings from graveyards to raising the dead to ghosts to skeletons. But overall, a good spooky time. And that is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This book is just an absolute delight. And if you haven't checked out this or honestly any of Aidan Thomas's works, I highly implore you to do so because they are just full of squishy, lovable characters. This is a story where we follow Yadriel and he accidentally summons a ghost but unfortunately it is the wrong one. Basically in hopes of having his more traditional Latinx family accept him. To accomplish this with the help of his cousin, he basically performs a ceremony that his family has conducted for generations to summon a ghost and help them pass safely into the afterlife. But unfortunately Adriel summons the wrong one and instead sees the resident bad boy Julian Diaz. And now Julian will not leave him alone. And to make matters worse, there also seems to be some mysterious and dark things happening on his family's graveyard. So now he makes an agreement with Julian to basically help tie up some loose ends for him on earth before he passes on into the afterlife and also receive a bit of help as him and his cousin begin to investigate these issues. This book is just amazing. First off, Yadriel Julian as a couple, as a pairing, is just 
sugar cookies sweet. You absolutely fall in love with them. You love how they communicate with each other. You love how they kind of complement each other. It's just so delightful and beautiful and you just fall in love. The family component of the story is truly at the heart of it. Yadriel's relationship with his cousin, with his family, obviously it's complicated, but there's also just so much love there. And it's also so thoughtfully written by Aidan Thomas. It's just such a wonderful part of the story as well. And then on top of all of that, there's also a supernatural mystery component to this book as well, which obviously kind of keeps the plot moving forward, adds an element of spookiness in parts of the undead, which makes it a perfect Halloween read as well, but if you want an adorable romance, a coming of age story, family, magic, this book is definitely one to read. And the very last book I'm going to recommend has to do with necromancers in space, which honestly, I don't know what screams fall more than, you know, space skeletons. So we have Gideon the Ninth by Tom Zimmer. This is a very unusual and I personally think very unique sci-fi necromancer based story. We primarily follow one of our main characters, Gideon, who's grown up on the Ninth House planet. And this is a very desolate, removed planet within the sort of necromancer political sphere, but they have their own type of necromancy power. And from day one, Gideon has been trying to escape off this planet. However, her arch nemesis has also spent every day of her life preventing Gideon from doing so. But these two individuals who hate each other make a deal at the beginning of this book because Ninth House has presented an opportunity as well as all the other houses to basically travel to this remote planet and engage in a competition to become basically a powerful political individual within the system, which provides Ninth House an opportunity to kind of raise its own status from where it's been for so many years. Gideon agrees because she really wants to get off this planet. The two of them travel together there where they're quickly thrown into a very bizarre and dark and very dangerous competition for this political power. Not only are you competing against other individuals from other planets, but you're also trying to just not die from this devious structure that they're all staying in. You don't know who to trust but you also have to rely on people to survive the night. People are keeping secrets. It basically turns into this like murder mystery competition story that's also about unlocking like necromancer secrets. It's pretty cool and I personally think very unique. Gideon as a main character is also pretty funny. She has a very unique uh, style in terms of how she narrates her own life, which makes this book very, very engaging in my opinion. But again, I just feel like this book is a lot of fun. Necromancers in space, there's a bit of romance, there's a bit of competition, and there's lots of death. So if that doesn't screen fall ambiance, I don't know what to say. Alrighty guys, those are my must read fall recommendations. Let me know below some books you think would be perfect for the fall season as I would love to know. And I will see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye.